Hello and welcome back to my nail corner. In fact, welcome to my new nail corner because this is the first video I am recording in my new space, which is gonna show up with some challenges, but hang in there. So first, let me introduce to you the three colors that I grabbed from a cute little Etsy shop called One Sparkly Mermaid. These called my name. I love foils, I love flakes, I love gray, I love white. They were just perfect. So these are the three colors I snagged from them and I'm going to use two of them today. So as I get started, uh, you will notice a bunch of shadowing. I moved up to my new nail corner and I'm trying to figure out my lighting and as I started recording this, I was like looking in my camera and going, oh, the shadow's awful, I don't know how to fix this. Cause it's obviously like different ceiling lighting in the room than what was in my space downstairs and then I have like a desk lamp and all kinds of things. I used to use a tripod to hold my phone and have a ring light around it. And then when I moved upstairs, I got to move to a different kind of mount for my phone, which I love so much. You might have seen it in the picture I shared in one of my other videos of my desk, but I'll pop it in here so you can see what I'm talking about. It gives me all this elbow room. I can like move around so much easier and not bump the tripod. However, that ring light is magic and you'll see partway through this video i'm going to switch things up because i was like this is not working the shadows are driving me nuts and i felt awful because i think it's kind of hard to watch so i apologize in advance but hang in there because partway through this video i figure it out i change things up and it gets better so i'm gonna get into my dip application here i have my virgo and gem base out love love my virgo and gem liquids so pulled them out and I'm going to go ahead and dip into this color. It is called Marbled and it is like a, it's a white base with like silver and pink foils in it and they are so pretty. I love it so much. So when you're working with foils, if you haven't before, I highly recommend pouring them out like that into a cupcake liner and then laying your finger flat upside down into them. Dipping into them is just not the ideal scenario. So lay your finger flat and then tap those foils down. So foils in general are usually quite delicate and really easy to manipulate and even kind of press down into the dip powder while it's still soft-ish you know when you've applied your base and you don't want to touch it right away because it's kind of sticky but once it's starting to dry it's still a little bit um, manipulatable I say this word a lot and I don't even know if I'm saying it right but you guys know what I mean you can manipulate it a little bit so you can kind of push those foils into it so that when you dust off the excess powder you don't lose all of the foils you know because there's nothing worse than dipping into it being like oh that's gorgeous and then dusting it off and losing all of the pretty foils so second dip same thing lay it upside down in and if you like shimmy the cupcake liner it'll bring the foils to the top and you can really decide kind of where you're going to lay your nail into and then um you can, if you want to, like if you have bare spots or, you know, you just want to move things around, you can use um, like a toothpick to grab some of those extra foils with some base on the tip of the toothpick, just like you would with um, glitters and add them in the spaces where you want them. So that's an option. So I have all of my clear liquids out, by the way, in a top drawer to my desk and I'm loving that. So I'm pulling from clear dips that I like forgot that I had. So this one is Nail Addiction. If you haven't checked out Nail Addiction, I did a video last year sometime. I'll pop it in the cards for you guys. It's I loved, loved, loved their products. Still do. I just haven't pulled them out for a while. And I love their clear. It's really, really nice. So I kind of have taken to getting rid of the clears that I don't like and using the ones that I love. And I have a good handful of clear dips that are really good. So if you see me use it on this channel, I like... I recommend it even if I don't say it out loud if I'm using it it's because I like it I've gotten rid of the clears I don't like so that's just a disclaimer for the future so I'm gonna get into the dips on my other three fingers the reason I dipped in clear on my ring finger and it's just sitting there like that is because I'm going to do a color block in a little bit here and I have peel base on my nails so if I were to tape off that nail you'll see in a minute um, and then pull the tape off 
it would it would pull up that peel base and I didn't want to do that so I put a, a dip of clear down and after I do my first dip in this gorgeous shimmery gray it's almost like slightly ever so slightly like a, a lavender tone gray but like just a hint um, but if you put it next to like I don't know charcoal gray or black you would probably see the lavender come out in it but look how gorgeous that shimmer is I bet you could chrome this like I'm 99% sure you could chrome this anyway after I finish the first dip on those three fingers I'm gonna activate that clear dip and let that harden before I go in for my color blocking so hang in there tolerate the shadows for just another minute I promise it'll change and I'll be back in a second to talk about color blocking While I am clear dipping these or clear capping these other fingers, I did want to mention that I was browsing the One Sparkly Mermaid shop today and there were some cute dips that I can't wait to get my hands on. So when you go shopping, save some for me. But I'm gonna pop up a couple of pictures in here. There's this gorgeous like rainbowy foil. Oh, I love this. And then this trio of pinks that are thermal and flaky and gorgeous. Oh, I can't wait to try these. So definitely hop over to One Sparkly Mermaid on Etsy. I will put the link in the description box below and check them out because I love these little small batch shops and the unique things that they're coming out with. So very cool and definitely worth looking at. So also you guys, I really appreciate like the support that you give to these brands that I show off. I often hear back from them after a video posts and they're like so grateful for all you guys shopping with them. And that's so fun and it encourages me because you know, like I'm here to create pretty nails and like I would do my nails anyway. But doing it on YouTube is a fun opportunity to bring some exposure to shops that you may not have heard from before or little shops that that can't put a bunch of money into marketing or things like that so it's really great for them to get that kind of feedback and exposure from 
videos from little YouTubers like me. So thank you guys for showing these uh, store owners your love and your support and I really appreciate it. So it in turn encourages me. So now I have activated those nails and I am going to get into color blocking. So it's been a minute since I did a color block. I did one quite some time ago. It feels like forever, but it was probably just last summer. Um, and I did it kind of diagonally on two nails. So this one is just straight vertical. I used my Sharpie to kind of find the center mark. Be careful if you're doing that and you're not using a dark enough um, dip to cover it up or whatnot. So keep that in mind. Maybe use like a white marker or something or nothing if you have a good eye. But I just have some washi tape. Like this was just like in a craft drawer I had and I love to use it for color blocking. It's kind of like mini painter's tape. So it works out really nicely. So I'm applying that down the center of my nail. Sorry if you just heard that loud noise, I kind of bumped my headphones. I record these voiceovers using my son's like gamer headphones. They're not like the huge gamer headphones, they're like headphones with a microphone in front, but kind of looking nerdy while I have this headphone on. But anyway, it works. You guys can hear me, right? So it works. So I've applied that tape down the middle and then I'm going to apply my base to that side of my nail. Now this is the part where I was talking about, that's why I have the clear dip down because when I'm done with this and I pull that tape up, if I had it just applied right on top of my peel base, it would just peel my peel base right up and then I'd have a problem. So with the tape in place over clear dip, it protects my peel base from getting pulled up. And I can just apply that base to the one side of my nail where I want it and that's going to allow the color block to happen. So. I'm no, I'm like no pro at color blocking. I don't do it that often, but this is how I do it and it works really nicely for me. So after you do your first, go ahead and dust off the excess gently and then apply your base again. Now, um, you could dip straight into the jar if you really want to, but with the tape on your finger, like that's going to get pretty messy. It's going to stick to the tape and just kind of be a mess so I recommend either pouring it over straight out of the jar like that or you could get like a like one of those wet and wild eyeshadow brushes that I use for ombres and you could tap it on that way so or use like a little spoon I have that I should have got that little like itty bitty spoon I got out from the rainbow day nail bar oh that little bitty spoon is so cute and I forgot to grab it so anyway there are lots of ways that you could get it on there and then look how satisfying it is when you peel up that tape. Look how clean that line is, you guys. Mm, I just love it. So yes, I definitely recommend pulling that tape off while, like, while you have base on your nail, but not activator. So at this point, I've seen some other people like to activate the part that they've already done. Don't do that before you pull the tape up because if you do decide to activate it and then you pull that tape up, it's gonna be like hardened dip powder on there, not soft and pliable. So keep that in mind. And so sometimes activator is really helpful because say I did that part of the nail in like a solid pure white and then I was gonna do glitter on the other side. If you activate that side that was white, then it's going to keep it from getting contaminated with glitter from the other side of your nail. So something to keep in mind if that's a style you're going for, then you can activate at that point and then um, put your glitter dip on. Another reason is maybe your line came out a little wonky, like maybe some base leaked under the tape. If you activate it, then you can take like one of those metal files and just clean up that edge really nicely to get a crisp line. So. I am going to just lay into this marbled color again, which by the way, you guys, how pretty is this color? It, it literally does remind me of like a marble countertop. Um, I think it's, I think it's really pretty. I really liked it. Um, so I'm going to do two dips into that and then I'm going to cap the whole thing in clear so that when I file, I don't mess with it. But before I do my cap in clear, I'm going to apply some striping tape right down that line. Just as a disclaimer, it was the plan from the start. I didn't get like a wonky line and I thought, ooh, I'll fix this with some tape. <laughs> but 
let me tell you, it's something I would keep in mind for the future because if you do a color block and like maybe your line isn't crisp or it doesn't like line up just perfectly, you could absolutely cover it up with a piece of striping tape and I think it looks so cute. So you'll have to let me know what you think of a color block with a little striping tape right down the line in the middle. I really liked how it turned out and I hope you guys do too. So I'm going to let you guys watch for a minute. I might pop back in if I feel like I need some commentary for you guys over the striping tape, but I know you guys watched me do it not too long ago. Granted, this method I'll be doing is a bit different than the one I did last time. So stay tuned and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have some silver striping tape here. I'm going to use some itty bitty scissors and cut a piece of that off and apply it down the line between the two colors on my accent nail. Now, the way you saw me do this in the past or just recently was with gel products and I'm gonna do this all with dip products. So if you have an issue with gel, this is the way to go. And honestly, I felt like this method performed better than the last. So I went ahead and took my base out and put it on my nail, just like straight down that line in the center of my nail. And then I took my little piece of striping tape. Now, when you're using silver striping tape, you guys, it looks the same on both sides. So it took me a beat to figure out which side was the sticky side. I'm not sure it truly mattered since I was applying it, like I was sticking it to the base on my nail, but I still fumbled around with it until I could figure out which side was tacky. So I just laid that down the center of my nail. I'm gonna use an orange wood stick to just kind of press it down and like make sure it's nice and smooth and in place. And that worked perfectly. So after I did that, I took my activator and just dabbed it straight down that line. So what that does is it makes your base dry right up. So it held that striping tape really nicely in place. And then I'm going to clear cap over that. So I haven't done a clear dip on this nail yet. I'm gonna do it over the striping tape. So that protected it while I was filing and buffing and it kept it really flush. Like it was just super smooth and I was really happy with it. So there's the dab of activator to just harden that base right up. It dried it and like held that striping tape down like cement. So stay tuned. I'm gonna cap and clear, file and buff, and then I will be back to wrap this up.
All right, so we are all filed and buffed and I got all that shimmer off my my fingers, which made me look like the Tin Man. So this is my new desk. It has a glass top on it. And that's why I have this towel down because it's super reflective, right? So having my light right there, you guys would be having the reflection right in your face. So you might see some changes in kind of my backdrop on my desk until I figure out what works ideally for me. But I highly recommend if you can do your nails over a glass surface, do that. So my desk is like this beautiful butcher block that my husband stained so nicely. And, and before I even touched it, like put anything on it, we got a glass top made because it will protect it from any chemicals, anything I might spill, any scratches, dings, whatever. Like I've seen a lot of people's dining room tables or coffee tables or things ruined by spills of like dip, base, activator, acetone, and it just breaks my heart. I feel so bad because I just know how that would feel. So I highly recommend either working on a glass top if you can, or just definitely having something spill proof down to protect your surface. So I have activated my nails. I wiped them off with a lint-free cloth and now I'm going in with my dip top coat. If you're new here, then you haven't heard me say this before. So welcome and thanks for being here. Please consider subscribing and joining me for more future content. But to walk you through dip top coat, you need to apply your first, first coat with two to three quick swipes over the nail. The reason I say quick is because the longer your brush lingers on that nail with activator on it, the higher your chances of hardening that top coat brush. The activator on your nail is curing the top coat that you're applying, but if your brush lingers on it, then that's going to make your brush harden. I know a lot of people deal with that. And then you're gonna wipe your brush off before you go back into the top coat bottle, and that keeps the activator residue from getting back into your top coat and making it gunky. So now that I'm on my second layer, you can really take your time on that second layer because you already have one coat of top coat, it kind of acts as a barrier to the activator that's on your nail. So you can take your time, get around to the sidewalls and the cuticle line and cap your free edge if you want it to last a long time. But you can really take your time on the second coat. First one has to be just two to three quick swipes. And then like I said, wipe that brush off and go right back into the jar for your next nail. Those are my tips for top coat application and to get like a nice, shiny, beautiful dip top coat. Virgo and Gems top coat always performs great for me. I have no issues. So if you're in the market for some liquids, definitely consider checking them out and make sure you check the description box below. I have a link that sends you to a website that has a list of all the disco discount codes that I have available for you guys. Maybe, you know, add that to your favorites list. So next time you're shopping, you can check and make sure that there's not a discount discount available. Why can't I talk to you guys today? I don't know what's happening. So I had waited a minute and that was me checking to make sure everything was dry and good to go. And now I'm going to finish with my candy skincare cuticle oil as per usual. It's my fave. I think this is the happy birthday scent. I don't think it's available, but I caught it on like a anniversary sale or something this year and it just it kind of smells like cake and it is perfect timing because I am recording this on this voiceover on Tuesday night and it is my daughter's sixth birthday today. My baby is six. So happy birthday. It felt totally right. My little Riley girl is now six years old. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and I will see you in my next vid. Bye now.